Is Karim Ardon borrowed time for you? Is he already flatlining and in need of a defibrillator? Well then, have I got the mod for you. Something that should bring the whole game back to life. And today, I'm not only going to show you the mod, but I'm also going to start the first episode of a new career mode series based on it. But first, if you are new around here, don't forget to grab that subscribe button and the bell notification so you know when the mod goes live to the public and keep in touch with the rest of my content. Also, if you do go on to enjoy the video and also the content, don't forget to hit that like button, that really helps me out. I must also caution you before we all get a bit too excited, modding is for PC versions only and this cannot be applied to consoles. And with that in mind, none of this would have actually been possible without a collection of fantastic tools that are available, including G-Man's Frosty Tool Suite, and good luck to you with your new job at EA Man, RDBM20, Aranactu's Live Editor, and a thriving community of other modders out there, with big props to Slim, who created EEP and helped me overcome an issue where the teams would only play each other once in this mod. There really are some great general realism and quality of life mods out there too, including the well-known realism mod from Pfeiffer, the excellent but under the radar realism mod from Paul V2K4, the all-in-one mods from the likes of Musley, and quite literally a slew of others to improve faces, boots, kits and all sorts of other things. But what you should know about all these, if you're currently using them, is that I've designed my mod to stand alone, and whilst it may work with some of these, I cannot yet guarantee it. So, from the video that you've seen in the background, you can see that my mod puts the National English League at the bottom of the English Pyramid, adding an extra layer of depth to the league system. It has all the teams currently in the league, it includes their badges, mini kits, and even stadium names. But one thing that I'd like to improve over time is the actual kits. Now perhaps this is the sort of thing we can set up as a community and for such purposes I've actually set up a Discord server. There's a link in the description down below in order that you can get in there and there's lots of things in there including fan zones for people that are actual fans of the uh, National League teams etc. So jump on in there and let's start to build a community around this mod. Fans of the National League might be a little disappointed in me too, as the first release doesn't feature the actual players, as creating over 600 players from scratch in the database was a challenge in its own right, let alone faithfully reproducing each player with their respective stats. I am just one man after all, and so this mod has eaten 6 weeks of my life already. So perhaps we might look at improving that database in the future, and adding the actual players in there. but. Don't underestimate the epic task that would actually be. Now, as you can probably tell from my accent, I'm originally from the Midlands, and so my usual RTG series is based around my hometown team, Warsaw. So my first thought when building this was, who shall I use? The obvious candidate is Notts County, relegated from the League 2 last season and begging for a resurgence as they have a bigger budget, stadium and prestige than anybody else in the league. However, there's two other teams up for consideration too. Eastleigh, as they're probably the closest team to where I live now, and Solihull Moors, which is who I'll use and try and guide through the divisions and hopefully onto Champions League glory. Now as you've already seen in the squad screens, I've tried to faithfully reproduce the sort of uh, statistics that the National League teams would have in comparison to their League 2 counterparts. So we've got players in the sort of late 40s, early 50s, and those players should obviously help us to get through the, this division and then grow uh, in stature as we move on into League 2. You'll see as we go through this series that I've also made some other changes to the career mode settings in order that it improves the way the game plays for this particular type of series. Right then, here we go. Let's get this career mode series off and running. As I've already mentioned, I will use Solihull Moors as part of my career mode series here in the National League. Okay, so as always, it's really important to get involved with the pre-season tournaments, especially so with the National League here, because we need to bank as much money as we possibly can in order that we have uh, an advantage against the rest of the teams going into the rest of this season. So, let's have a look where we can actually go. And we've got three tournaments, as usual, open to us. I'm not going to head out to Spain. Uh, I will stick it around in England, and I'm going to go for the one that's slightly more money, and we'll play off against uh, several of the teams from our own division and also a few from uh, the divisions just above us. Okay, so I think the best thing to do now is just have a bit of a squad report. Let's have a look at the, the players, see who we can 
kind of improve as we go along who we need to ship out because they're perhaps a bit surplus to requirements and where we need to strengthen and that will be a key factor in the pre-season tournaments also because that will give us an indication as to where we need to try to make improvements going into towards the, the season proper. So the first thing that I notice is that we've actually got an abundance of goalkeepers. Uh, three on the books here and the one that stands out to me as somebody that can make way for for squad space would be Henry Mason here, 23 years of age. Uh, he's the lowest of the two goalkeepers in terms of his overall, so we'll bung him on the transfer list. Then the next more startling fact is that we don't actually have a left back on the books. Uh, the, we do actually have a right back in Mason Martin that can play both right and left back. and. Looking through the list here, Max Allen can play right back as well. But at 56 overall, he's our best centre back. So realistically, I don't want to be playing him at right back. So I think we do need to address uh, the balance of the defensive line. And we'll look at that again in the future. Uh, moving onwards, playing in a 4-3-3 formation. So we don't have a left winger, which you'll notice in a moment. And we don't actually have a right winger either. However, we have got a couple of right midfielders in fact we've got three and we also have a couple of left midfielders in terms of center mid Rodri Andrews is our best player overall anyway with 57 and he can play as a right mid or a center mid so he's clearly going to be uh, in that center bunch we will play uh, both Allen and Jackson in rotation to start with out on the right hand side and uh, Cookie Monster here will play in the middle as well 33 years, years of age will use his experience and put Ennis out on the left wing to start with. Striker wise we've got three of those uh, George Jackson is retiring at the end of this season at 34 years of age he can play anywhere across the front line really and uh, I think he will be quite crucial in this early phase of the season. Uh, Phillips has already gone up by one overall because I've done a training session and he is now at a 46 rating, he's 20 years of age. And we also have Brendan Rafferty uh, on the books at 18 years of age, 48 overall, but most importantly has that special something. So, you know, we will try to make improvements to Brendan as we go in order that we can get the best from him in the future. Okay, so next up we are looking at the scouting network. This is going to be imperative to the way this particular series works. We are going to have to focus quite heavily, I would imagine, on youth academy players. However, what you're going to notice straight away is, is that I've made some alterations to the actual cost of scouts. Uh, because I find that throughout the course of a, a career mode, it becomes a little bit too easy in terms of being able to get the best scouts. So I want to try to manipulate their costs. As we can see here, the most expensive scout on the list is John Morrison. He has a four star, five star uh, rating and he's 7.65 million. Uh, clearly well beyond the remit of Solihull Moors. And the only, the only scout that's actually on this list that we can afford at the moment is Johannes Magnusson, the Swedish uh, scout with a one star one star what you'll notice here though is he's going to cost us forty five thousand pounds usually with the vanilla career mode that would be seventeen thousand pounds so as you can tell i've just upped things slightly uh, i can't go too aggressively for for everybody because although i've got a budget in just in into a million pounds there are teams in the national league that have significantly less money to work with so i don't want to go and really destroy the youth academy side of things so that they can't actually go out and buy players right guys so we've got johans magnuson here we're going to send him out on his first scouting mission and usually what i do with scouts is send them off to their home country to get things on, on underway so we'll send him off to Sweden and I'm going to look for some technically gifted players. But if you want to let me know in the comments section down below where you would like Johans to go for his next scouting mission. And the one comment in the batch that gets the most thumbs up is where I will send the, the, that scout. Now do remember because we you can use the live editor in this PC version of uh, the career mode series. We don't only have to use the places that are on the map. There are a massive list of places that we can actually scout that you won't won't see in a vanilla career mode uh, somewhere just like Wales you know everybody wants to scout Wales and you can actually do that with the live editor I'll put a list of all the places that we can scout down in the uh, description box below and as I say the one that gets the most thumbs up is where we will send Johans on his next scouting mission 
Okay, so before we crack on with some games in this episode, let's take a look at the objectives that we've been set by the board. And the first one is within three seasons in the National League, fight for the league title. We then must finish in mid-table this season. And thirdly, on youth development, we must sign at least two players younger than 20 years old with potential greater than the average overall rating of players currently in the same position. Now that's a bit of a mouthful and might actually be a bit of a challenge. But clearly we will try to uh, supersede all of these settings that the uh, board have set us in the opening phase of the season. Okay, so what you will notice as you go throughout the career mode series, if you are playing the mod, is that you know, I've made some changes to the player chat scenarios, the press conferences and all of those sort of things. It's not massive changes at this stage, but it is things that I can build on in the future and, and make some changes to. So as you can see here, the message that uh, Piers Rafferty, the current captain of the team, is sending us is a little bit different to the one that you would ordinarily get in the vanilla version of career mode. So. So as you can see here, I have forwarded the calendar on to the first match of the Champions Trophy. I will play through this tournament, but I'm only going to show you the highlights because I want to get into the season proper and then we can have influence where the team heads for the rest of the season. Okay, so we're at home here for this first game of the Champions Trophy. And the first thing that you're going to notice about Damson Park is that obviously I've selected the smaller stadiums where possible. And as you can see there, the kits have the right number, uh, number colours and all that sort of thing. And I've obviously got banners around the stadium that I've created. All of these things will be improved as, uh, as I go through with the mod. But let's get this pre-season tournament underway. Moved the ball around quite nicely for that chance, but slapped at that opportunity on the left foot there, the striker. Rafferty here breaking through from midfield. Tries to lay a finger on him there, the defender, but can't quite get on it. Ennis with the ball into the box isn't going to challenge the keeper. Well done there by Cookie. Oh, nice interception though by the... Northampton player. This away here, yeah, uses pace down this left hand side. Leaves the defender in his wake. Oh, good effort there from uh, Jackson. Nice ball by Ennis who got himself away down the line. Into the box. Jackson with a decent left footed strike, but it's a bit down the throat of the goalkeeper and he manages to push it wide. Oh, Rafferty, sold him short. <laughs> oh, that was uh, quite lucky in the end there. Keeper did exceptionally well. Well done by Cookie Monster. Oh, but he's given the ball away. And a great save by Edwards to tip it around the post. Saving the blushes of the Cookie Monster. Great run here by Rodri Andrews. Oh, ball roll. Fantastic stuff. Oh, he's driven himself into the box, but he overran it, really. And Allen's away. Needs a good delivery. He got one, and it's in. A bit of a mess there by Arnold, the goalkeeper. Between him and his post, but we capitalise on that opportunity as Jackson gets us 1-0 up in this game. Terrible bit of keeping there at his near post, but we'll take it. <laughs> Big clearance. And that is a terrible shot from lines. And we will. And we've seen it out to get ourselves a 1 0 victory here in the opening game of the Champions Trophy. So, we push on. Let's see if we can get some more results on the board and get into the next round. 
Okay, so moving between the pre-season tournament games, I've come back into the higher scout screen and we have another option here to pick up a scout and that is Ian Kennedy from the Republic of Ireland. So we'll pick him up now, get him sent out on a mission to the Republic of Ireland to see if you can find any decent talent out there. But as I've said before, let me know in the comment section down below if you would like me to scout anywhere else with all these scouts. The ones with the most thumbs up, the comment with the most thumbs up about where to go, we will scout in the next episode oh we've been turned <laughs> not a bad effort there Cooper for Stockport County nearly rifling one into the top corner Audrey there getting a shot away under pressure from the uh, defenders, didn't really have much else on them. Great ball, can Cookie get it? He can! Great goal for the Cookie Monster there, a lovely through ball delivered to Cookie, gets us the lead here against Stockport. Lovely bit of distribution there as Cookie finds the space in the middle of the park. And a lovely delicate finish past the goalkeeper. And we ship one at the back post there. Gets in behind us at the back post. And a really good header to be honest and now we are one all in this tie unlucky from Allen trying to get the tackle in play gets the cross in and you know I think we need to be playing a, a better left back out there uh, he is really a naturalised right back that we are playing at left back so we do need to sort out our defensive line perhaps we need to bring in a signing we'll see who the youth academy scouts are able to uh, pick up in the coming uh, reports but I think that we will be looking to the transfer market to try and strengthen things just after we get out of this pre-season tournament good tackle there by Alan Clark rinses the defender. Oh, a good shot away, but Edwards is the uh, match for that effort. Managed to get the ball off to Rafferty. Back inside, Andrews. Oh, I can't quite find Phillips. And the tap breaks down. Can he pick out Rodri? He can. Takes the shot. Keeper makes a really good save, though. Over the top here for Ennis to chase. Cuts back inside. Fine Cook. Edge of the box. We should have done better there, Rafferty. There's a really great goal. Great stuff from Jackson there. Give and go on the edge of the box, Mira Moran, and we've absolutely blitzed them. Right in the dying embers of this game. Nice ball across, went back into the box looking for it, and it's a really good finish. Okay, so we're going to simulate this third game of the preseason tournament just purely because we're already through, so we may as well just play this one out on a simulation. We do go down 2 0, but I'm not too disappointed there. Uh, realistically, we're already through to the next round of the, the tournament, so it makes no real odds. Okay, so moving on to the next round of the tournament means that we have bagged ourselves 162,000 into the transfer budget, which will obviously go some way towards improving our ability to go out there in the market and also in order to uh, get uh, additional scouting reports back.
Okay, so here we are into the semi-finals of the Champions Trophy. And they beat us at the back post there. Not really much we can say about that. Didn't close the ball down enough. Always going to get beat at the back post. Uh, just purely because of the type of uh, players we are currently housing within this team. So we are now going to need to get ourselves a goal to level up the score here in this tie. Oh my God, Rafferty, that is an absolute perler, my son. That is a banging goal, Rafferty. A bicycle kick. Unbelievable scenes. Great delivery there from Ennis. Was a little bit behind him, so he decides to pick out the bicycle kick from his locker. And he absolutely smashes it past the keeper. We're back to one all. I mean, the keeper should have done better, to be honest. But come on, a bicycle kick by a National League player in this tournament. Uh, that is absolute scenes. But Cook, he's done well to get the ball back into his possession. And we've knocked the ball out wide here to Allen. Step overs. Oh, yes, nice. On to Andrews. And he's felled. Come on, ref! Um, okay, ref. Is it inside? Find Rafferty. Ball goes out wide here. Ennis is in. Can he capitalise? He cuts inside. Oh, yes. Cheeky little dink shot to the back post. And we've gone 1 0 up just ahead of half time. Or well, one goal up at, at half time. 2 1 is the score now. And we're starting to run right here. Really good goal from Ennis. Ripped them apart on the counter-attack. Did well to cut inside and he places it really nicely into that far corner. Great interception. Rodri. Oh, great bursting run from Rafferty. Finds his counterpart, Rafferty. Oh, and he can't quite sneak it through. And he finds Andrews, he can. Andrew bursts away at pace. In hot pursuit, though, are the defenders. Bursts into the box. Take shot inside. Oh, hit it, somebody. <laughs> Men over at the back post. Ennis, what a terrible shot. A nice overlap from Ennis once more. Driving inwards. Done the best, best of his uh, opposition there. Back post and the keeper just manages to tip that over as Allen was rushing towards it. Great stuff by Campbell. Oh, come on, we need to clear the lines, boys. Get that ball out. Well done, Kelly. That also means we've bagged some more money for the season ahead. £288,000 into the kitty. And we move on to the final. Okay, so we've got our fair share of stamina issues heading into this final, but we are going to field an unchanged lineup from the last round, and uh, we're going to go at it with Stevenage, who obviously beat us in that simulated game earlier on in the tournament. So we're going to try and get one up on our rivals. Oh, unlucky there from Rafferty. A great little chip ball through from Ennis, who had kind of got himself into a bit of a pocket. Uh, but uh, we managed to get the shot away nonetheless. Pocky Monster here drives forward, finds 
Ennis on the bar at the edge of box. Back to Cook. Rafferty. Oh, and we go 1 0 up in the final of the Champions Trophy here. Another fabulous team effort as Rafferty gets himself on the score sheet once more. The youngster really proving his worth here in this pre season tournament. Great little ball off here by Cookie. But uh, there's some composure there shown by the youngster Rafferty as he just slots that past the keeper into the bottom corner as we go 1 0 up. Great effort there by the defender. But they do manage to slide a shot away as Paffitt there knocks one past the post. Good tackle. He was actually offside. It was a good tackle though. And they didn't actually finish their dinner. Little dink. Oh! So unlucky with that. What an effort. Oh, and Rodri pulls the trigger. Farman has to come to the to the rescue of Stevenage. Lovely effort there by Andrews. Right into the bottom corner, but the keeper does well to push it round the post. Rafferty doing really well. Drives into the box. Ah, oh, just dispossessed. The youngster once again showing his potential. We did all the right things in the first half. Now it's time to see if we can make good in the second half and go away with our first bit of silverware. Looking monster. Play him. That's it. Rafferty. Ah, oh, tries, tries to beat Farman once more, but unfortunately the keeper was easily going to prevent that one. A bit of loose control, but he's come away with it anyway. He's into him again. And he's knocked it out wide. Finds Martin, who knocks it into the box. And that is a really poor effort from Andrews. He was free and clear in the box there. All the time in the world to control that. And he tries a header from distance that doesn't really come off. And that, as they say, is that. A 1-0 victory in the final against Stevenage is enough to see us over the line and collect our first silverware as Solihull Moors manager. And what a way to get our career mode series underway here as we face off against opposition from a different league. And here we go, boys. Here is the first piece of silverware in this career mode series. hope there's going to be plenty more of those to come here at Solimore Moors as we head into the season proper in the next game we will be buoyed by this Champions Trophy results So yeah, as you can see there, we are the winner of the Champions Trophy. That also means we will pick up a significant portion of money um, for our troubles. So let's have a look. Extra £315,000 into the kitty. And I'm quite sure that the board will be happy with us going on that far into the tournament. So yeah, as we can see, that has had a dramatic effect on our transfer budget and wage budget going into the rest of the season. Just shy of £1.5 million in the transfer kitty, which will allow us to do a lot of scouting in the Youth Academy. Not going to go off and buy huge sums of players, but we are going to look to strengthen things, and I have a few players in mind. 
Okay, so the obvious thing to do uh, in this kind of career mode series is to raid the free agents list, but having done so and looked for a left back in the form of both Wanlu Koulibaly and Zolst Nagby, um, the, the biggest problem we've got here is wages. You know, unfortunately most of our team are on exceptionally low wages because of where we sit in the league pyramid. So these guys will be way too much. Uh, we, we can clearly sign both of them, I would have thought, but it's going to really annoy the rest of the squad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore these two for now. Uh, perhaps we'll leave them on this list just in case we get towards the end of the season and perhaps we might be able to afford a bit more in terms of the wage budget. But what I'm more interested in, in is having a look at the local teams uh, and seeing how we might be able to utilise some of the players that might be in their squads. And they'll obviously see us, us as, feeder, as a feeder team at this stage, but as the seasons unfold, I would imagine that we will usurp those teams. So the three players that I'm currently interested in is Dion Sanderson from Wolves, uh, Cockrell Mollet from Warsaw and Alfie Bates from Warsaw. Okay, so Dion Sanderson is a done deal as far as I'm concerned. The player still has to agree to move to the club, but we have agreed terms with Wolves. So that means that if he does agree, he will be coming into the squad. He is a 57 overall, so he'll clearly fit into the squad quite easily at this point. The only snag that we do have is that both Alfie Bates and Cap Cockrell Mollet both have very short contracts left under 12 months with Warsaw, so that means that they can't go out on loan. Now, I'm not particularly interested in keeping them long term, but what I do need is I do need a left back. So I'm going to try and sign up Cockrell Mollet and let's see how we get on with that. Okay, so we've managed to get a deal done with Warsaw here at £175,000 for Cockrell Mollet, which is a bit of a steal, to be perfectly honest, for a player with 59 overall, I would have thought. So, let's try and get him signed up. And that gets us our naturalised left back that we were looking for. So, a couple of signings there. We will leave Bates where he is at the moment. We will look, perhaps, further down the season at maybe looking at that player in the future and I'll keep these guys on the free agents list on the on the short list for the time being as well. Okay so we've got our first youth scout report coming in from Johan Magnussen out in Sweden and I will go through this one this time around in the way that uh, all the players have arrived in the youth academy report however in future I'll probably weed it down so that we only get the players that you need to take a good look at. Uh, so we've got Lundqvist here um, we're looking at the overall of 48 to 66 of, with a potential of 53 to 73 worth 60,000 pounds. And what you will notice here, quite an important thing is in the Youth Academy, I have made some changes to the way in which it all works. So players can be from the age of 14 up until the age of 19 and they don't retire from the youth academy until they're 20 so you know a couple of these players here will be 19 years of age we could bring them straight into the squad we can leave them in the youth academy you know it just gives us a bit more flexibility a bit more realism in terms of uh, the overall uh, age range of youth academy players in my opinion so um, yeah that's how the youth academy works in this particular mod and as I say, we're just going to go through and reject a, th a few of these players, get them off the list, and then go back through again to have a proper look at uh, what we've actually got in the list here. Okay, so as you've seen, it's a bit of a mixed bag in terms of the ability that we've got from all of the players. Uh, there's several players here that we will clearly uh, sit out in terms of... Uh, uh, seeing if they actually improve in the squad report next time around but I also think there's a couple of players that potentially we need to drag straight into the youth academy because even if we just have them on the on standby uh, in order to bring them in in future we're going to maybe maybe be able to uh, gain some money down the line so the first one of those is Lucas Peterson 19 years of age has an overall between 51 and 71 so could even be a starting player at this point has a potential of between 60 and 84, so we will sign him to the Youth Academy. 
We've then got Henrik Fredrinson, uh, overall between 52 and 70, with a potential of 65 to 89. Uh, he's left footed and has a height of 5 foot 9. He's only 15 years of age though, so he will have to wait a little while in the Youth Academy to grow, but we will sign him up. Uh, Eriksson, we will hold for now, has an overall between 37 and 55, potential only of 78, but in this lower league at the moment, uh, that would still be quite a good player, so we will hold on to him and just see how he progresses in the youth academy. Same goes for Schoberg, uh, 40 to 58, with a potential of between 54 and 78. With his valuation set at 150,000, I would imagine that he will be quite close to that upper tier of the overall, so around 58. So it might be worth signing up, but I will monitor him in the next report just to see how he's progressed, especially as we don't actually know which position he's going to play at this stage. Uh, Henrik Andersen, 15 years of age, overall 39 to 57, with a potential of 51 to 75. Again, has a nice valuation, but at 15 years of age, we will hold on to him in this report for now. And then lastly, we've got Hans London. He's 14 years of age, has an overall of 39 to 55, with a potential quite low at 68, but he may marinate. Being 14 years of age, we may see some improvement from him. We'll follow form on that with the next squad report. We'll be starting with questions now. Okay, so we're attending our first press conference of the season, and as you can see, we have things like the logos for the National League on the microphone, and obviously Solly Hallmore's badge in the background, all sorts of stuff that uh, just adds to the depth of the, the mod, in my opinion. Right, here we go, the first game in the National League and you are going to notice a few more changes here. Things like the league logo that you're watching just right now and ad boards, etc. will all show the modifications that I've made to the game. Uh, there are some additional banners, etc. in the game. Notts County are a team that have been in FIFA before, so I can use their banners when they've been in FIFA. Uh, so they've got their banners up there. Their crowd have bought their banners with them. And as you can see, Solihull Moors have their banners all displayed as well for this game. And this is on his bike. Great through ball there to Captain Cook. <laughs> and he's managed to finish it. The Cookie Monster starts as he means to go on. A fabulous goal there from Cookie as, he, as we take the lead against Notts County. Badge there, club badge on the flag. You might notice as part of the mod. And a lovely slide away there as we show this replay of Cookie driving through the middle and smashing that ball into the corner where the keeper cannot get his hands to it. 1-0 up to Solihull Moors and hopefully there is more to come. Nice give and go and Lance Allen is away. Oh, he's managed to find Rafferty, and Rafferty slides one into the bottom corner. It's 2-0, and we really are starting to romp home here. 31 minutes into this game, and Rafferty's now stamped his authority all over it. So, a fantastic start to the season here. Hopefully, we can go on into the rest of this game in a, the manner that we have started. But what a way to get things cracking. Great finish there from the youngster. Oh, this is lovely. Cookie. Go on, Cookie. Great bit of play there. Finds Rodri Andrews, who cuts inside. He's driven past the player. Oh, Cookie's nearly got himself on the score sheet again. So close from Captain Rafferty there. Just drifts wide of the post. Ooh, 
what an interception by Martin. What a way to get our campaign underway as we go into half time 2 0 up here at Damson Park. Decent shot away there by Mitchell. Skewed off his boot though. Goes a well wide. Keeper doesn't even have to put a glove on it. Okay, it's time for some personnel changes here. And as you can see, a uh, nice little touch there with the National League logo up on the scoreboard. And that's it, a victory here in our opening game at home. The fans will really appreciate that one. Uh, play Some great play from some of the players in this one. Uh, a couple of goals from both Cookie and Rafferty has earned us our first victory of the season and we have got our season off to a flyer. OK, guys, so that's where we're going to leave this one. I really do hope you've enjoyed looking at my mod and obviously the start of my series that goes to use the mod uh, with Solihull Moors. As you can see, we've had a brilliant pre-season, signed a couple of players uh, that I think will benefit us in this season. And also, you know, the, the Youth Academy is moving along nicely as well. So... If you did go on to enjoy things, don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel so you get updates of when the mod goes live to the public. Now, don't forget to get into the Discord channel as well so that we can start to build this community. Whether you're a fan of the National League, FIFA in general, career mode stuff, the community is going to be essential in driving this particular mod forward. You know, we're going to be able to make different versions of the mod to suit different scenarios. But I do hope that it will be something that people will enjoy using, adding that extra layer to the English uh, league system and allowing people to go from the non-league teams like I'm going to do and try and take them onto Champions League glory.